Mr. War here. Yes. Another map video. Oh, what is this here? Oh, is it this nice scrumptious cupcake, my friend? Hey, I like it. Hey, oh, what is this like neon blinking? Oh, I want my cupcakes. Ethan, thank you very much for icing those 30 cupcakes. We are going to have to remove you. Oh my goodness, what the temptation. It's too much. It's just too much. Hey, it says to solve word problems using tape diagrams. And it says we're going to do using tape diagrams and we're going to do fraction by fraction multiplication. Heavy duty, my friends. So let's go ahead and get started here. Ethan is icing 30 cupcakes. All righty. He spreads mint icing on one fifth of the cupcakes and chocolate on one half of the remaining cupcakes. The rest will get vanilla. And how many cupcakes have vanilla frosting? Ooh, that's a kind of a heavy duty problem there. No need to fear, Underdog is here. I mean, actually, well, Mr. War is here. <clears throat> Not quite as famous as the Underdog guy, but hey, I'll do my best. So we need to get that tape diagram out. We're very used to doing these tape diagrams. They're really handy. You know, they're so simple. I mean, draw a rectangle, yeah, okay? We don't have to worry about having a million different little manipulatives. We can show our work using a tape diagram. And I'm gonna go, let's use green here. Well, first thing we definitely know by looking at the problem is what, you know, what it, does the, the first sentence tell us? It tells us there's 30 cupcakes. That kind of helps out because right off the get go, we can mark our tape diagram as being 30 <laughs> cupcakes, even though I'm writing right over the problem, okay? I hope you can deal with that. Now it says that he spreads mint icing on one fifth of the cupcakes. Okay, so that is how much we, we know. What we could do, we could actually divide this into fifths, right? We could show one-fifth, and if this is one-fifth here, then I could actually say, well, let's say that's about two. Let's just say that's about three, four, and five. Okay, not completely accurate, but it will do in a pinch. I'm just going to write mint down here, okay? And I guess below that I could put one-fifth. Because one-fifth of the cupcakes are going to receive that mint icing. Sounds very, very tasty. What does the next part of our problem say? We're just taking this step by step. It makes it a little bit easier. Now, it does say that the remaining, that the one-fifth of the cupcakes and chocolate, he spreads mint icing on one-fifth of the cupcakes and chocolate on one-half of the remaining cupcakes. Oh, I see. So the one-fifth is the mint, but one half of the remaining. That sounds like, well, we could say that that's four fifths here because that's how many pieces we have left. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's put on, let's just make another tape diagram. This is showing the amount that's remaining. The one fifth, the mint icing, did say that one half of them, so let's go ahead and do the one half. Kind of like the green, gonna stick with the green. So then one half of them are gonna be chocolate it, the problem did say that, so let's go ahead and do that, just like what we did. But so far, we're just following what the actual problem says. It says that one half of those then are iced with chocolate. But then what does it say? It says the rest will get vanilla frosting. Aha! Uh -huh. So this here will be then the vanilla, because that's the remaining. And it happens to be half, because it's half of them are chocolate. And so we could go ahead and put a question mark here because we really don't know how many we have here. Here we know we have a half. Well, what are some other things that we know? Well, we don't know. Our, 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 obviously, we're trying to find how many cupcakes have vanilla frosting. So let's go ahead and look at this tape diagram and think for a second. We have 30 cupcakes. And here we know that we have one-fifth have the mint icing. Okay. Well, we've been doing in previous lessons is we say, well, if there's five units here, one, two, three, four, five, we've done this where we take the, the five units or that whole piece and say that that's equal to, and in this case, be equal to 30 cupcakes. Okay, will we agree with that? All right, because we have five units and we have 30 cupcakes. That one unit is equal to uh, six. So six cupcakes, so that means each one of these each one of these fifths up here is equal to six. Half of that remaining, splitting that in half because we have six, 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 and six would be 12. 
Are we okay with that? And here the other half is also 12. So just to double check here again, 24 then divided by 2, since we were splitting those in half, does equal 12. 12 times 2 is 24, so that works out. I'm just going to move that up there for the time being. Okay, let's come down. Let's get in some yellow here. So 24, we can also write it this way. 24 divided by 2, right, is equal to 12. Another way to show that. Well, then that would mean that 12 then, 12 of the cupcakes have vanilla icing based on that number. So 12 cupcakes, cupcakes, learning how to spell, have vanilla there you go. You have 12 cupcakes, have vanilla icing, and that works out. How nice. We could even think of this in another way, really. See, when we label this one-fifth over here for the mint icing, we had a fraction of the cupcakes that were remaining. So if this was one-fifth, that meant that there were four-fifths remaining here because each one of these were a fifth. One-half of the remaining cupcakes get chocolate icing. Okay, so we could say one-half. This is right there. So one-half of what fraction? So one half is the, the half of the remaining is going to be one half of four fifths, which we know of means multiply. So what is one half of four fifths? Well, you can see we can multiply straight across or remember we've learned in previous lessons that we could go ahead and reduce. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I just like doing that. Okay, that divided by two is one. This divided by two is two. So we end up with just two fifths. Two-fifths of all the cupcakes get vanilla. We described that. And the question asked was how many cupcakes of vanilla get? Well, we said two-fifths, which again is two-fifths, it's vanilla, of the 30. And let's see if it's going to give us our answer of 12 cupcakes. It's a way of checking. Okay. And when you look at it, one-fifth of 30, we already decided was, was six. So, yeah, if one-fifth of 30 is six, two-fifths of 30 then would be 12. And we could show by multiplying here, though. I'm going to do the algorithm. So 2 fifths times 30, that would be like 30 over 1. We have a common factor. So I'm going to say, I'm going to divide a 5 out of that because they both have a common factor of 5. If I divide a 5 out here, I get 6. And here, if I divide a 5 out, I get 1. And leaving me with 12 over 1, which we know is just 12. And again, we just basically checked our answer. And so 12 12 cupcakes. Now, pretty nice. But let's challenge ourselves a little bit with the problem. Huh? Like that wasn't enough for us. Let's change this problem just a little bit. In the meantime, I hope that can be seen. I think it can. So let's come over here. And, oh, uh, we have more cupcakes. Yeah, like I didn't have enough already from the last one. I mean, my goodness, I'm full. I'm going to have cavities for sure. All right, cupcakes, goodbye. Thank you for letting us know you're still with us. Now, we have a similar problem, but if you notice, let's just change the mint icing now to two-fifths of the cupcakes, okay, have the mint icing. So again, here comes the challenge. What did we do last time? We got that tape diagram out, and we said that uh, we wanted to show that hole. And I'll go ahead and do that. Let me get my green here. Just that's 30 cupcakes, that was the hole. But this time, we have one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, and five-fifths. But now we're saying that two-fifths of the cupcakes, okay, have the mint icing. We're moving down a little bit. Because, again, we know that there's 30 here. Now, certain numbers that we know are still true. We know that each fifth was equal to six cupcakes. So we're showing that now. So I can still draw my line and say, well, that's right. Half of these get the chocolate, and I'm going to abbreviate for speed. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and abbreviate as well. This is the vanilla, which, of course, we don't know what that amount is at this point. It's still equal to 30 cupcakes. And I'm just going to put CC. How about that? Cupcakes. So that means one unit has to be equal to six, just like before. This, These three quantities of six... In each unit, we have one-fifth here, six, another six here, and another six there. Well, let's just subtract now. Let's subtract this 30 minus the 12. Okay, and now we're going to end up with 18. So 18 and a half means that 
chalk is going to be 9, and the other one's going to be 9. Because remember, this was based on, this was the half that was remaining here. We didn't know how many cupcakes. So now we end up with 9 cupcakes were, uh, with, were frosted with, with vanilla, as for the chocolate. That, you know, we were doing that RDW. You read the problem carefully, look at what the hole was, and then can I draw something? Can I show something? Get that tape diagram out, show whatever you can about what you understand of the problem. And then right after that, now we're writing our statement. We're solving and we're writing our statement that, and we're writing our statements with equations and then also with words. The end here we would say that there were nine cupcakes that received uh, vanilla frosting, showing our understanding. Okay, doozy of a problem, yet we have one more to go. This will be a probably as challenging. Let's take a look. Again, we're looking at the same objective. In this case, we have Maddox. Of course, our best buddy Maddox, our friend. She puts one quarter of her lawn mowing money in savings and uses one half of the remaining money to pay back her sister. Okay. I think if she, it says if she has $15 left, how much money did she have at first? This problem looks a little bit different than what we've done in the past. See, in the others, we always knew what the hole was, and this problem we don't. It's almost like we need to work backwards on this problem because we don't have the hole. So let's go ahead and get one of those wonderful tape diagrams out that we've been using quite frequently. So basically, since we don't know what our hole is, I'm just going to put a question mark. We don't know because it's like we have to work backward to find out how much money she had to begin with. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and mark this into quarters. So we can split this in half. We could do it like this. And the quarter right there is going to show us her savings. This is how much Maddox chose to put in her savings. Good deal. All right. Again, we don't know what the hole is. What else do we know about the problem? Let's look back to that problem again. As we keep reading it for our understanding, uh, it says, she uses half of the remaining money to pay back her sister. Oh, here we go back with that half of the remaining. Well, you can see we have three quarters remaining. It's almost like we're trying to find half of three quarters, which is what we're doing. But let's go ahead and do what we did on that previous problem. Let's just use another tape diagram. Pretty sneaky. We're just doubling it up. Here we have half. And here we would have this is how much money she's going to give to her sister. All right, we'll put that down there. So let's, you know what, since we have half of the remaining money to pay back to her sister. That must be the other half. This is what she has left, so this must be the $15 that she has left. Okay, now we have that. Now we've labeled all of those, all the, all the boxes here. We have half of the remaining, right? She paid to her sister, and then she has $15 at the end. Well, if this is $15, and this is half of the remaining, this amount that she gave to her sister then to pay her, to pay her back was, must also be $15. Now suddenly we have, so $15 and $15 is $30. Then we know that these three equal parts here is equal to $30. That helps us out. That means that each one of these equal parts, which is a quarter, must equal ten dollars each because this was the half of the remaining and we figured it out by working backwards by knowing that Maddox had fifteen dollars left and remember half of the remaining she paid to her sister and this is what she had left and that was half of that amount that must meant the other half also fifteen dollars that gives us thirty dollars for these two equal parts and making it thirty dollars for these three equal parts up here. And you're wondering, how can I go from two equal parts to three equal parts? Well, this initial tape diagram was divided into quarters. So now that lets us know if those are equal, now we know what she put into savings was $10. The question that we had to answer is, is if she has $15 left, how much money did she have at first? We can look at our problem now. So basically, now we have 10, 10, 10, 10, right? Because three units on the bottom, or these three units, I should say on the top, was equal to $30. That's how, we, that's how we determined the 30 here divided by 3 got $10 each here. Of course, you know, that 
meant that our one unit had to equal ten dollars. That's how we we figured that out. So four units then is equal to forty dollars. That ends the problem. So Maddox uh, had forty dollars at the beginning, or in this case, uh, forty dollars from mowing. But at the beginning, I'm just going to put. But you could say she earned forty dollars. I'm guessing from her mowing. Or no, is that what it says? Of her lawn mowing money. Yeah, so this would have been $40. Maddox, I hear, is quite the mower, too. She'll clip that grass. Perfect height. Exactly what you're looking for. My friends, that does end this video. My goodness, these are some really, really challenging problems. And that means I need to provide you with some more letters of the code. Okay? And, of course, you have... Uh, the rest of the code to complete the word and get credit for this assignment. Yes, this is really fun. I mean, this math is just, it's cool, you know? Now, go live long and prosper.